I want to start off by thanking everybody for being here tonight. Um, my name is Brian Baumgart, Chairman of the Douglas County Republican Party. And uh, thank you for being here. I know it's a lot better than um, the original date was 100 degrees and the weather's cooperating now, so hopefully this will be a little more enjoyable. Um, thank you for your support. Uh, we couldn't do what we do without people like you. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank our sponsors from our event. Um, most of our candidates, we got some good candidates and you're going to be hearing from them real shortly, but they, uh, they've all sponsored our event and we appreciate their support. We're going to get started off with uh, Senator McCoy. I know you got to get going, but I'll, I'll let you get up here and uh, if we can maybe have six, seven minutes, uh, hear a little bit about you and what you hope to accomplish. Well, hello everybody and uh, hope you're enjoying the wonderful weather and the great barbecue. I had a chance to, to get a few bites in there before I got, got up here. Um, I'm Bo McCoy. Uh, my wife Shawn is with me. Um, our four kids are, are uh, out and about at a ton of different activities and whatnot tonight. Uh, but it's great to be with you um, and it's great to be uh, part of this uh, very exciting uh, governor's campaign um, here across our state. Um, we got our campaign kicked off uh, last Tuesday with a four-day, um, 21 uh, stop tour and 1,300 miles in my pickup, which is parked a little bit over there where we had a spot to park, um, which we thoroughly enjoy. It was great to get out as a family and take part in Husker Harvest Days and get a chance to, uh, to talk to, uh, to a lot of great Republicans um, in a, a lot of different places across the state. Um, I've spent the last five years in the legislature, uh, grew up on our family cattle ranch uh, that's just over the Colorado line west of Binkelman, um, and being part of agriculture is who I am. Uh, it's a big part of my life. Uh, now involved in small business uh, in the home improvement industry uh, here in Omaha and the construction company where we own and operate um, with, with our family. I love being part of a family business, and I think growing up in agriculture uh, really teaches you a, a strong work ethic um, that's sticking in there until the job is done. My brothers and I uh, started a custom hang operation that put our way uh, through college. Uh, and now my brothers and uh, my dad and I own and operate our, our company construction, family construction company together. Um, I'm in this governor's race because of our four kids. I want them to have the same or better opportunities than, than uh, what Sean and I have had uh, the chance to, to take advantage of. Um, I want them to be able to raise a family uh, here in our great state or start a business or build a business, whatever they would like. And that starts with a great education and funding education um, in the best way possible for, for, our, uh, for our kids in, in our great state. Uh, it also uh, involves, I believe, making sure that we have um, the best paying jobs um, for, our, for our kids and making sure that we're matching uh, skilled, uh, skilled jobs with young Nebraskans because there's a lot of great jobs. I had the opportunity to talk to some business owners in O'Neill last week. Uh, there are jobs in small town, rural Nebraska um, that we just need to match young Nebraskans to, jobs that have been open sometimes for months. Um, and we know, I know we have a lot of uh, young Nebraskans that want to stay here in our state. Um, to do that involves us cutting taxes because we're still a high tax state. We've worked very hard on that in the legislature um, and that's been a big focus of Governor Heineman. It'll be a big focus for me as the next governor. And you have to hold the line on state spending. You have to make sure that we're being as efficient as we can with our tax dollars and that we're finding those redundancies and things in state government that we can cut and eliminate in order to have the ability to cut taxes and to continue to put a priority on education. Uh, so those are uh, just some of my priorities in, in this race for governor. I look forward to getting out um, and spending the, the coming weeks and months uh, getting to know a lot of Nebraskans, um, getting a chance to take part in a lot of events, and earning each and every vote uh, that it takes uh, to make this race work. 
Um, so I appreciate the opportunity to be with you tonight. Uh, enjoy your food. And thank you, Brian. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to uh, invite up our former national committeeman, Pete Ricketts. Brian, thank you very much. And thank you all for coming out here this evening. It is a gorgeous night, and Brian, you made a wonderful decision by moving it from the other night to here, because that would have been 100 degrees, and I think 72 is about the right, about the right temperature. What? And I wasn't a candidate then. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, John. That's exactly right. This is really a good night. So uh, the state of Nebraska will have a decision to make next year about who's going to be the next governor. I would like to be your next governor. I want to bring my experience creating jobs, managing budgets, and large organizations, and working with schools to make sure that we have the foundation for future growth here in the state. I love Nebraska. And I want to make sure that every kid in this state gets a great education, grows up, and has the opportunity to live, work, and raise their family right here in Nebraska. I think that's what most Nebraskans want. They want to keep their kids close. I know my mom wants to have her grandkids close. And so it's one of the things that's important to Suzanne and I. My wife Suzanne is right over there. Like Everybody would wave and say hi to Suzanne. Thank you, honey. We've been married 16 years, and we're very proud of our children, Margo, Roscoe, and Eleanor. Uh, Roscoe and Margo are here with us tonight. You guys want to raise your hands? They're a little bit bigger from last time than I was in 2006. So what are going to be my priorities as governor? I think there's three big topics. Education, job creation, and strengthening our rural economy. When it comes to education, we need to make sure that every kid is getting an educational opportunity and we're focused on outcomes. So we need to hold schools accountable for results and remove the roadblocks to teacher effectiveness in the classroom. When it comes to jobs, we need to hold the line on taxes and spending to make sure we keep jobs here in the state and then also encourage our entrepreneurs who are creating the jobs. I mean, if you think about some of the companies here in Omaha, Think about your ConAgra, First National Bank of Omaha, Oriental Trading, Omaha Stakes, or Ameritrade. You know, Ameritrade was started right here in Omaha because that's where my dad lived. And that's what happens with entrepreneurs. They start companies where they live and they keep them there. And so now there's over 2,000 jobs in Nebraska because my father started a company here. I want to encourage those entrepreneurs to be able to stay here. And that will be part of the things I focus on as governor. And then finally, the rural economy. Agriculture is the biggest industry in the state. And we need to encourage our small towns to stick around. We need to help our farmers and our ranchers to do well. And we can do that with a variety of ways, encouraging value-added agriculture, controlling property taxes, and making sure that we have large ag exports for our producers here in the state. And that good economy in our rural areas will help drive the economy here in Omaha as well. I will also be a tireless advocate for agriculture. I will live up to my pro-life principles. I will defend the sanctity of marriage, Second Amendment rights, the death penalty, and I do not believe in giving state benefits to illegal immigrants. I absolutely look forward to this race. I look forward to earning your vote. I ask for your vote May 13th. Please, if you like what you see, go to my website, PeteRicketts.com. Like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, volunteer for my campaign. I can't do this alone. I need your help. And I'll ask you to work with my team and I and the great people of Nebraska to move Nebraska forward together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks, Pete. Next, I'd like to uh, introduce our state auditor, Mike Foley. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brian. And thank you to all of you for your involvement in the political process. You know, the sad reality is that when primary day rolls around next May, roughly two out of three, if not three out of four voters are going to stay home that day. That's the typical pattern. The only exception to that pattern is a presidential year when we have a spike in the number of uh, voters who participate in the process. But most voters stay home, particularly on primary day. So my hat's off to all of you for your involvement in the political process. It's a, it's a sad reality that so many people have written off. That's a scandal. We need to address that. You know, I was out at Husker Harvest Days uh, last week. A number of us I know were out there visiting with people. It was a great event. If you ever have a chance to go out there, you ought to do it. It's a fabulous event. And as I was out there, I met a gentleman, and he said, yeah, I've heard about you. Uh, tell me a little bit more. Tell me what you stand for. And I started talking about how I wanted to uh, rein in government spending and uh, create more uh, efficiency in government operations and drive down the rate of taxation and so forth, the usual Republican you know, mantra. And he stopped me and says, you know, you guys all sound alike. You're all saying the same thing. I said, well, there's a difference here. The difference is I walk the talk. I've done it for seven years. I've been in there as your state auditor, and six years as, your, as a state senator prior to that. I walked the talk and I've done it. And I've rattled the cages down there in Lincoln. I've made some people uncomfortable because I'm holding them accountable for how they spend our tax dollars. What do you do with an agency like the Nebraska Department of Health and Human Services that sends out 19,000 checks, $500 each, to persons who are not expecting to receive a check, and you put a little stub on it saying, use this for your energy bills. Did you really think that money was ever going to be used for energy bills? No, it wasn't. Those checks were cashed at Walmart, uh, a kino parlor, liquor stores, drug stores, and so forth, grocery stores. It wasn't used for the energy bills. Eight million dollars flushed down the drain because some bureaucrat at HHS didn't read their own rules, which provided that the money should have gone to the energy companies to pay for those energy bills, not to the low-income persons who are participating in that program. That's wrong, and that's the kind of stuff that's going to stop on my watch as, as your next governor. What do you do with an agency of government like Health and Human Services, again, which administers federal state programs where you've got to get the matching program dollars from the feds, and you don't even ask the feds to pony up for their portion of the monies? We lost $1.8 million simply because we didn't ask the feds on time for the money they'd owe to us. That's the kind of thing that I found as your state auditor over and over again. I walk the talk. And as governor, I'm going to take all that knowledge that I've gained as your state auditor forward. And I'm going to hold those agency directors accountable. And I'm going to take HHS apart, brick by brick, not with the intent to damage the agency, but with the intent to rebuild it into an effective unit of state government that will serve the vulnerable while respecting the taxpayers of Nebraska. I'm going to insist on that. I'll hold people accountable. I know I can do it because I'll be the only governor who would have had prior service as a state auditor. I'm bringing with forward a wealth of knowledge that will be invaluable to my service. Again, I thank you all for all you've done for our party. We need your energy. We need your involvement. Thank you all so much. God bless you all. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. I had a call from... Senator Jansen earlier today, he said he's not going to be able to make it. Um, we do appreciate his support of this event. And I don't know if there is a, a representative here, but if there is, that they want to say a few words, they're, they're more than welcome to. Um, and next, uh, how about Senator Carlson? Is he here? I, I didn't see him walk in. He, we also thank him for his sponsorship of this event. Um, we have three Senate candidates, uh, Shane Osborne, Bart McClay, and Ben Sass. And uh, I heard from Bart McClay this morning. He said he would not be able to make it. Once again, he's a sponsor. We appreciate it. Um, and Sid Dinsdale. Oh, and Sid Dinsdale. That's right. We have four Senate candidates. <laughs> and he's a sponsor, so we do appreciate it. Um, is, Shane, I, is Shane Osborne here or any representative of Shane Osborne? How about Ben Sass? No. Nope. Is Sid here? Oh, there he is. Why don't you come up? And I'll, uh, I'll let you be the next to uh, introduce yourself. Thanks, Sid. Thank you. Well, I hope I'm not all, always that anonymous. Probably won't last much longer. So, well, my name is Sid Dinsdale, and I grew up in Palmer, Nebraska, a town of 400 people. And in 
It was a great day yesterday. We went out to Palmer and had 150 people in a town of 400 people turn out to uh, hear what I had to say about running for the United States Senate. And so that was very enjoyable with my family and uh, we've been out there for about four generations. Uh, and then we went to Lincoln where I was fortunate enough to have Tom Osborne introduce me and endorse my candidacy, which was a real privilege. And then we went to Elkhorn where we've uh, lived for the last uh, 25 or 30 years and where our kids all went to high school and had a good crowd of a couple hundred people out there. And my kids tell me I'm doing really good on Facebook because I have f 500 likes already in two days. So I think that's pretty good. I, I really don't know. Is that good? I don't know. I hope it is. So I'm running because I've already had my career in banking and agriculture. I have a broad background. I, Bo, I've also been in the hay field pushing that uh, hay around. So I know what you're talking about and cattle feeding and grain and fertilizer and that kind of thing. Uh, but I spent my career the last 37 years uh, in Pinnacle Bank business here in Nebraska and around the Midwest. So I think I have a combination of agriculture and small town values and perspective as well as uh, bigger business in, in the Omaha metro and other places around the Midwest. My wife and I have been very active in a uh, bunch of civic uh, events and responsibilities around Omaha. I I'm serve, uh, currently serve on several boards, uh, nonprofit boards. So I think I've had a broad range of experience and I just want to thank you as a group because I've never been to one of these deals before and you are the workers and you are the ones that put us on the map. So I want to thank everybody uh, for the work you do for the Republican Party and I hope I can uh, do a good job for you. I hope I can win the election and represent us all well in Washington and I'm going to be a citizen legislature. I think 12 years is plenty for anybody in Washington. That's what our founders originally intended to uh, have and YouTube is a wonderful thing. I've been watching Reagan's speeches and he's just so right on Reagan and he said the other day, you know, we want to have a government for we the people, not we the people for the government. And that's what I want. So, and I think that's what all you want too. So thanks a lot for having me. It's nice to be here. Thank you. Thanks, Sid, for being here. Uh, before we jump into the rest of our candidates, um, I want to invite Pat up with Win It Back. She's got um, something important to talk to us about, an important pe petition drive. So I'll turn it over to you for real quick. Thank you. I'm Pat Lunger. Normally I'm, I'm stomping against expanded gambling, but while the legislature's not in session and we get a little bit of a breather, I felt this was really important. This is a, 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 a petition to put an amendment on the ballot that, of the Nebraska Constitution that would require a valid photo ID in order to vote. We couldn't get it through the legislature. And we only need 130,000 signatures, so... Any help that you can give us tonight, I've got all the counties, so please see me, and we'd love to have your signature and get this on the ballot in November of 14. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Once again, I want to thank our gubernatorial and Senate candidates for their support, for their sponsorship of this event. Um, 2013 was a really exciting year for Douglas County. Um, we had a chance to flip City Hall. Uh, we elected uh, Mayor Stothert, and... Um, She's here today, we appreciate that, and I see uh, our Republican council members are here. <laughs> Councilman Frank, Franklin Thompson, and I, I believe council member Amy Melton was here. Yep, there we go. We also had the chance to uh, flip our, the culture on our OPS board, and you, we can see if you, anybody's paying attention to the news, there's big things happening, good things happening for our kids here in Omaha, thanks to that. 2014, we have some big opportunities as well, and I'm looking forward to you know, moving that momentum into to this 2014 election cycle. Um, and one of, the, one of the big areas is a chance to get our uh, legislators some help down there in Lincoln in the Unicam. Um, we've got some great candidates lined up already. Uh, many of them are sponsors, and I thank their, them for their sponsorship. And uh, I'm going to introduce them and let them come up and uh, talk about a little bit about why they want to run and what they hope to accomplish. Um, so we'll start off with uh, LD4. Um, I know Matt Butler couldn't be here. We do appreciate his support. If he has a, a representative, you're more than welcome to speak. Um, otherwise, I'm going to ask uh, Robert Hilkeman to come up. Oh, okay. Well, we got Matt Butler real quick. Um, Matt, ob Matt's obviously not here. He couldn't be here. He's on a business trip right now. Um, we are running a very energetic grassroots campaign. We've been really busy this week already. 
and for a couple weeks now hitting the doors, um, meeting with voters, uh, getting out there and seeing what the concerns are about issues in Nebraska. Um, we do um, appreciate any volunteers, anyone that can. Uh, we have a sign-up sheet on that table. Uh, if you need any inform inform information, you can come see me or visit the website at votematbutler.com. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Robert Hilkeman, LD4. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's nice to be here this evening. Let me tell you just a little bit about myself. I'm from Randolph, Nebraska, uh, a farm boy there, and uh, uh, been in Nebraska my entire life. Uh, I want to introduce tonight my beautiful wife, Julie. We happen to be born in the same hospital uh, about... Uh, four months apart. She was a little bit ahead of me on that one. So my wife, Julie, over here. And we were born in Norfolk, Nebraska. Uh, went to Nebraska Wesleyan and went to medical school. I, I taught for a period of time in Table Rock, Nebraska. Uh, the first eight-man football game I ever saw in my life, I was the head coach of one of the football teams. And, you know, Tom Osborne has always said that a team makes its biggest uh, improvement from the first game to the second game. Believe me, when you've never seen an eight-man game before, that's when a, the coach makes their biggest improvement in coaching from their first game to their second game, particularly when it's eight-man football. So we taught together for three years in Table Rock, Nebraska. Then we went to Chicago where I went to medical school, on to Milwaukee for residency. We came back to Omaha in 1977. I've established the Foot and Ankle Center. I've been at, at uh, uh, 73rd and Dodge for over 30 years. When I came back to Nebraska, the statutes for the practice of podiatry were very antiquated. In fact, they were the most antiquated in the state, I, in the country. I almost didn't come back to the state to practice because of those antiquated. And a friend of mine, a, a good Republican from Fremont, said, Bob, you come back to Nebraska with your kind of capabilities, we can get those laws changed. And for the next 10 years, I spent almost every Thursday down in the legislature, and we took three different bills through, and now podiatry has the best practice license in, or practice act in the country. It was during that period of time when I worked with all of those legislators, I said to myself, I hope there's a point in my life when I could serve in the legislature. I appreciated every one of them, the, 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 the commitment that they made. In June of this year, my partner came to me and said, would you consider, I want to bring in a new person, would you consider leaving the practice? Well, I said, uh, anything is negotiable. And it took about 35 seconds and I was out of the practice. So at either, no. Uh, so I am practicing until the end of December and, and uh, we, we get the transition there. So isn't it wonderful that this opportunity, uh, a, a dream of mine, at 66 years of age, I'm going to uh, be able to run for this legislative position. And <clears throat> my wife and I have, uh, have uh, been married for 43 years. We have three wonderful children, eight grandchildren. Uh, we will... Uh, uh, I, I'm a physical conservative. I'm certainly uh, very much concerned about Medicaid expansion. Uh, there is no health care providers at the present time in the legislature. Uh, I would think with my 43 years of experience in medicine, I think I could probably help them a little bit in the health and human services. I've been a small businessman. I've owned that practice, that business, all this time. So I've got the small business. I was raised on the farm. As Bo has said, I, I threw a lot of hay, uh, bales of hay over those years. I had one. I, I am a very fortunate person. I've, I've, uh, I had marvelous parents. My mother's still alive at 97, still plays the piano, and is, lives in a retirement center. Uh, Julie's dad was a was a county agent, so we've got a lot of farm in us as well. So we've got farm background, education, small business, medicine. I'm a guy that really, uh, uh, you know, I, I've been very fortunate. I can retire, and I'm going to retire, uh, hopefully, to the Senate and represent Nebraskans and bring some good common sense. I'm looking forward. I'd take any help that we get, and thank you so much. Thank you.
Thank you, doctor. You know, as I met with these candidates, they all ask, hey, how can, can you help me find volunteers? And, and this is a good opportunity here. Um, I encourage everybody to get, get the chance, take the chance to get to know these candidates, maybe find a uh, campaign or two to help out with. Um, I spoke with Senator Kintner not long ago, and he talked about how this legislative session, they're just going to have to play defense, and they need some help down there. And this is our chance. 2014 is our chance to get them the help down there, and uh, then we can get something accomplished. Next, I'd, LD4 is actually uh, loaded with good talent, and that's okay because competitive primaries are good for the party. Um, we also have Charles Garman. I don't know if Charles is here. I didn't see him. Um, but he is another sponsor. And um, Rich Hurley. Is Rich here? Didn't see him either. Uh, legislative District Number 6, we have Joni James Craighead Hobart. And she was actually our first candidate to announce, so yes. she's ahead of the curve. Yes, I am Joni Craighead and I am running for Nebraska Legislature LD6. It is currently represented by Senator John Nelson, who is term limited. Um, I think a lot of you know that I've been very involved with the county party for about 20 years. I'm a former chairman, I've been on the state central committee, I've worked on a lot of campaigns, and I thought now's the time for me to be on the other side. So I am running. I um, believe that we need to keep Nebraskans working. I think we all need health care, but Obamacare is not the answer. I believe in quality education for children and adults. I have a wide background um, career-wise. I started my career as a clinical laboratory scientist. I've owned retail businesses. I've been a consultant. I've been a real estate developer. I currently work as the government affairs director for the Omaha Area Board of Realtors. I'm also a real estate broker. Um, so I do believe in, in small business, which I think is very important what keeps our state going. Omaha was recently ranked as the number one city in which to raise a family. I'd like to keep our kids here. And I did see one who I've known for years. She left and has come back to Omaha, and I'm so glad to see that. And I would like to see more people do that, too. Um, I am also very much pro-veteran. I think a lot of you know that my husband, Mike Craighead, passed away six years ago due to agent or a disease caused by Agent Orange exposure in Vietnam. I think we need to take better care of our veterans, too. And happily, a year ago, I married a wonderful man that I went to high school with, Nick Hoback, who's standing back here. We reconnected two years ago and got married a year ago in August. But um, I hope to be your representative in LD6. I'm looking for volunteers. I will answer any questions you have. And thanks for having me here. Thank you, Joni. In uh, LD8, we have actually a really good candidate. I'm, I'm excited about our, our um, Republican candidate actually um, ran a tight race last time, even though it leans a little more to the Democrat, that district. But Gwen Aspen is uh, going to be running. She's an excellent candidate. She's not here today, unfortunately. She had a, a prior event she had to be at, but she is a sponsor. And uh, I, I urge you to get to know a little bit about Gwen and maybe help out with her campaign as well. Um, in LD10, uh, Bob Chris, Senator Chris, is uh, a sponsor, and I didn't see him here, um, but he's running again. And then in LD12, uh, I'd like to call up Mervyn uh, Reepy. I always get your last name wrong. Yeah, thank you. I'm Merv Reepy. When I walked in, I thought this was a karaoke night. But um, and if you hear a little bit of feedback echo, it's because all the tables are now empty. But uh, I am Merv Reepy. I live in District 12, and I intend to seek the legislative seat that's currently occupied by Steve Lathrop, who is term limited. If we went about a block towards Q Street, on the other side of Q Street, you would be in District 12. My background is I, too, grew up as a farm boy and milked my share of cows. I was in the Navy and served uh, as a hospital corpsman and then spent, uh, I graduated from the University of Nebraska in Omaha and did a graduate work and a degree at the University of Iowa. I don't know whether I can say that or not. I also then spent some 30 years in hospital and healthcare administration. I was at uh, Bergen Mercy for 18 years and I was at Children's for 15 years. Uh, with that, I decided that I wanted to do something different. I do have an interest in staying involved and engaged and I like the legislative process. 
One of the things that I'm interested in is I believe that the generator of everything is jobs and taxes and that's what drives everything. But I'm also very concerned about the implications of expanded Medicaid. I'm opposed to that. I was interested that today I heard on the radio that Warren Buffett has come out and said Obamacare needs to be repealed. So now you'll wonder what my source is, and my source was Rush Limbaugh, so <laughs> must be true. One of my uh, one of my primary interests, or one of my would be my constituents if elected, would be uh, the mayor herself, and she ran a very strong race against Steve Lathrop some time ago. So, if nothing else, I'd like to get her vote before I leave tonight. Thank you. I look forward to meeting you and talking with all of you more. Thank you. Uh, next up is LD18, and uh, I'd like to call it Brett Lindstrom. Go ahead, Brett. Thank you. Good evening, folks. My name is Brett Lindstrom. I'm running for Legislative District 18, which is uh, Senator Lautenbaugh's district right now. Uh, just to give you a little bit of, bit of background about myself, I did grow up in Omaha. I ran in a, a previous campaign, uh, so it's kind of nice this time to not have to go up and against an incumbent, which I'm psych excited about. Um, like I said, I grew up in, grew up in Omaha. I'm married, I've uh, been married for about six years. We have a two-year-old daughter and a two-month-old uh, son, so recently born here. So I always pick to run my campaigns after we have a newborn, which is probably pretty smart. My wife enjoys that. Uh, but things, things are going well, and I will say um, I did play underneath uh, Bo Pelini, uh, Coach Pelini, but please don't hold his comments against me. So, uh, And I, I, do, I do like Bo, so I don't give him such a hard time right now. We'll work, we'll work through this as a, as a, as a state. So, um, Like I said, I'm running. I'm excited to run. We've had a lot of success here in the last month. We announced about a month ago. And a couple of things I'd like to touch on. I'm a social conservative, also a fiscal conservative. So what I can do to get the government out of your ways is what I'm going to work towards and, and uh, getting rid of the state income tax, social security tax. And we have a lot of great candidates out there, not only for the uh, legislature, but also for the governor's race. And I will support uh, any good Republican governor and we can work together to uh, make the state even better. I mean, it's a great state. Nebraska is a great state, but we can always make things better. So uh, I would appreciate any of your support. I met a couple people in my district that volunteered to walk, but that's always helpful. In a legis legislative uh, race, we need people to walk. We need people to uh, help make calls. And I'll, I'll, uh, I promise you one thing, no one will outwork me and my team. So thank you very much. Look forward to meeting uh, some of you after, after this, too. Thank you. We also have uh, one other candidate, an LD18. I don't think he's here right now, but Chad Adams. And then an LD20, John Seeler, is also not here. Um, he had a prior engagement, but if anybody's drinking water, you're drinking that courtesy of John Seeler. So. <laughs> um, and then we have another candidate in LD20 that I'd like to introduce right now. It's uh, John McAllister. Hey. How many people here are from District 20, Legislative District? A couple. One down there. Any, anybody from District 20? What down there. <laughs> Good. Maybe I should just go talk to you privately and not burden you all with uh, my campaign rhetoric here. But uh, I think we all know that uh, Nebraska, the good life, is the state slogan. Uh, we have wide open spaces, beautiful wide open spaces. We've got decent, hardworking people. And sometimes we have a football team that uh, we can sometimes be proud of. Wasn't the case last weekend. But I want to make that slogan reality. How are we going to do that? The way we're going to do that is tax reform. We need to reduce our, our income taxes. We have the 16th highest rate for income taxes in the country, according to the Tax Foundation. Only Iowa is higher. We have the 16th highest property taxes in the country, according to the Tax Foundation. Only uh, Wyoming is higher. We're only one of five states that has uh, levies any kind of tax on uh, Social Security. And finally, we're listed as in the Forbes list of where not to die, where not to die. It's in Nebraska. Nebraska is one of 13 states that still levies an inheritance or a gift tax. Not good. So tax reform is something we need to do in Nebraska. Secondly, we need to do something with public sector pension reform. 
when you have, when we lose a, a down, we have a downgrading of our tax, uh, of our, our bond rating, went down one notch because of a 700 million, 700 million dollar uh, unfunded liability in, in our pension plan. Not good. Secondly, you've got a fire chief that retires with approximately a hundred and thirty thousand dollar pension. The guy's only mid forties. What's he doing retiring? We need to change our system from a defined, uh, we need to go to a defined uh, uh, re, uh, contribution plan rather than re defined con uh, uh, pension plan. Uh, plan. Finally, uh, we need to look at uh, justice reform. You know, we had a guy who's mentally ill, and he gets out of prison on good time behavior, and he kills four people. That should not happen. That should not happen. We need to reform our justice system. Finally, we need to move people out of the state penitentiary. We have nine prisons, and we're at about uh, 1,600 uh, people over on, on the number of uh, people incarcerated. We're at 150% of capacity. We need to move them to county prisons. They can do it better, and they can do it cheaper. So I hope you'll uh, make Nebraska the, the good life a reality and elect me to District 20 legislature. Thank you. All right, thanks, John. I talked about in 2013, we, we had some big opportunities, flipped uh, City Hall, flipped the culture on OPS. 2014, we want to flip our legislature. We also have one other big opportunity, or one, another big opportunity I'd like to bring up, and that's flipping our county board. Um, I know we're all sick of ta our taxes continuing to go up and go up, and um, I've had the opportunity to, to meet with some good candidates, and you're going to get to meet one uh, candidate who's already committed to running today. Uh, Adrian, did you want to speak? Okay. Adrian Suarez. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, everybody. Uh, well, this is kind of my announcing, my announcing running for uh, county board uh, seat two. Um, basically, uh, over the last couple months, has been a Quite of an experience, you know, getting uh, asked to run, uh, contemplating it, and looking at my options. And I've kind of figured, uh, you know, I think it'd be a, it's a good shot. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty young guy. I'm only 27 years old. Uh, but I feel, uh, I wasn't born in Omaha. I was actually born in Mexico. And I came here when I was five years old and basically living out the American dream. I've, you know, been educated here. Went to Creighton Prep, went to Creighton University, uh, got my education, doing uh, business, and now, uh, you know, I'm still going to be involved in business, but I'm looking to, for a way to help out my community, and the last couple of elections I've been helping out, trying to get, uh, uh, you know, good candidates into positions, and then finally they kind of turned it on me and said, like, hey, why don't you put yourself in a position to do some direct good? Um, so I think that uh, I can... Uh, take my knowledge, my experiences, and my love for the city that's given so much to me and my family uh, that I can, you know, help it any way I can. I know there's, you know, there's issues everywhere, but, you know, you know, we just got to look down and we got to look at the information and we got to, you know, make the best decisions possible. Um, you know, I personally weathered the recession uh, right after graduation was the worst time. Uh, I know I saw a lot of my classmates, you know, struggling to get jobs, you know, one or two years out uh, and finally getting something. Um, and I saw what happened and had to live through it and adjust through it to be able to come out on top. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to build your foundations when everything around you is kind of hard to do. So, and, uh, you know, by getting involved, I think I can, you know, bring some of my knowledge and my experiences to the, to the county commissioner's office and, uh, you know, help out the public and help out everybody else. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you. And then before we move on, I did hear from uh, Shane Osborne's campaign. He's not able to make it, but we do have a representative. Pat, do you want to come up and say a few words on his behalf? Well, I'm not Shane Osborne, and you probably would have only known that because he was in uh, People's Most Beautiful magazine. So, um, hey, can we have a hand for all of the candidates? Boy, is there a lot of talent here. 
My name is Pat Borchers. I am the Douglas County Director of Shane Osborne's Senate campaign. Uh, I think we're blessed with a very strong field. Uh, really have heard a lot of good ideas. I'm supporting Shane because he's solidly pro-life and he's, and he's fiscally conservative. He truly reduced the treasurer's budget during the time he was in there and won awards for having among the best uh, treasurer's offices anywhere in the nation. There are not many candidates that can make that kind of claim. So, but you're going to have a lot of good choices. I hope you give uh, Shane's campaign a good look. Uh, I hope you give all of the candidates a good look. And let's go out and win big in 2014 for all of the GOP. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and we have some other good candidates. I'm not sure any, any of them are here, um, but I do want to acknowledge them. If you are here, you're welcome to come up and speak, or if you have a representative who wants to speak on your behalf. But I do appreciate the support of um, PJ Morgan and Marianne Borgeson, uh, both sponsors, both um, committed to running again. Uh, Meg Cords for uh, OPS, District 8. Um, Jim Trebian, who's going to run for Metro. Uh, Tim Cavanaugh from MUD and Gene Anderson and Jack Heidel for Learning Community, and then of course uh, Sheriff Tim Dunning. I think that's it for our speakers. I just want to end by thanking everybody again for being here. Thank you for your support. You really do make all of this possible, and 2014 is so important. So please stay involved, find a campaign to help out with, and uh, looking forward to working with you guys. Thank you.